Hey, privates. I am switching things up a little bit today, and I am bringing you a preview of a new podcast that I have been loving, and I think you are going to too. It is another podcast from the Pleasure Podcast Network, and it is called the Sletrepreneur Podcast. <laughs> And if you know me, I am a proud slutrepreneur. So if you're a slut and you're trying to make some money off of that, this is the show for you. From the champagne room to the boardroom, meet host Anna D. She's the stripper turned CEO who shares her uncensored story of being a self-made professional goddess in the adult industry. Maybe you saw her in the New York Post talking about selling her toenails and her trash to her OnlyFans audience. But on her podcast, she actually peels back the curtain and she gives you all her trade secrets to financial freedom. The Sletcherpreneur podcast also shares experiences of sex workers around the world who are forging their own unconventional paths and using their experiences to share newfound survival guides in the world of sex work. And you know, this information can be hard to come by and Anna just lays it out. So if you want to harness your own sexuality, ambition, and empowerment to build the empire you desire, all sluts are welcome to earn their PhDs in CE Hotery on the Slutrepreneur podcast. So today I am sharing a clip from episode number 11. It's called Weird Things I Sell on the Internet, <laughs> Used Underwear, and i this is a really great episode. If you are just like trying to get your footing on like, what are these things that I can sell on the internet and things that don't require me to show my face or, you know, because it's on the internet, you don't have to show up in person and it can be a little safer in that way. So if this is a world that you want to explore, I totally understand. I not only toyed with the idea of selling my used underwear before the pandemic, I literally was taking pictures <laughs> <laughs> documenting what was in my panties. I was taking it really seriously. And then the pandemic happened and I wound up not selling my underwear on the internet just because I was distracted with the world in crisis. But I did wind up starting my OnlyFans during the pandemic. And so I am actually going to be collabing with Anna and we're gonna, you're gonna be hearing more from her on this podcast and I'm going to be on her podcast, and so I am so excited to keep talking sletrepreneurship with Anna, and I hope you enjoy this little preview today. So here we go. So how much money is your used underwear going to make? Well, from experience and from just browsing the interwebs, you can make a good 25 to 50 bucks a pair that are just gently worn. And by that, I mean literally wearing your underwear for a day or two. Now, this is where it gets a little exciting. The best way I can phrase it is the more substance that is in your panties, the more money you're going to make. So if you're not afraid to wear your underwear for a week, a month, if you're not afraid to... You catch my drift. You can make quite a bit of money because there is a huge kink for this out there. Basically, guys want to see what you smell like. They might even want to taste you too. And <laughs> okay, I'm just going to throw out a funny story here. When I sold panties, I had a customer who would literally put the underwear in his cereal bowl, <laughs> eat all his cereal, and then drink the milk afterwards with my panties soaked in the milk in the bowl. And that was just his thing. And I made sure to charge him extra because that's what you do. Now, I don't really care what these fuckers are doing with panties. All I care about is how fast I can sell them and at the highest price possible. And repeat customers are even better. Offering bundles, even better. So we're going to get through all the logistics. If you're still listening... I got you intrigued. <laughs> All right. Just to reiterate, this is completely legal. Even if you pooped in your underwear, it is legal to ship it. And this is just in the United States. I'm not sure about other countries. So once you've created your account on the website of, you cho of your choosing, I want you to create your profile. But first, I want you to check out these websites, see 
how other girls are presenting themselves, how their listings look, how their photos look, what type of underwear they're listing. Basically, do some research. All you have to do is watch and learn in these situations. Now, when you create an account, I want you to make sure that you're creating a whole new email address before you even sign up. I don't want anyone Googling your email address and finding your personal information. Do something completely anonymous and make it cute. You could be slutty little bunny or fucking dripping wet June. I don't care what it is, but just make sure it has nothing to do with your real name or linked to any emails or names in that aspect. After you created your account, round up all the panties that you don't wear anymore and whether you're going to take pictures of them after you've worn them or perhaps on your body, just make sure your photos are in good lighting and look really sexy. And again, just look at how other people's photos look and do it at your own discretion. After you've priced your panties, you want to make it clear in the description what you are selling because there are a lot of fucking creeps and weirdos that are going to be asking for a whole lot more for a whole lot less. So I would put a disclaimer in your listing explaining things you don't offer. If you don't offer custom videos and pictures, make sure it's clear and make sure you tell people to don't ask for it because it's not going to happen These fucking people can try to be all persuasive, but you need to hold your ground, know your worth. Your panties are worth some fucking coin, girl. And have some fun with it. Maybe a guy wants you to wear, or a girl, maybe they want you to wear like some high-waisted cotton briefs and perhaps you don't have them. Well, why don't you make an Amazon wish list with that anonymous email we talked about, add a whole bunch of cute panties, and when you have a potential client request a certain type of panty, all you got to do is forward them your Amazon wish list and say, hey, you want me to wear them? Buy them for me. Now you got people buying your shit. Okay, this is great. (laughs) Maybe they'll buy your whole wish list. You never know. Okay. So there's always an opportunity to get more financial gain with every customer you interact with. Just remember to be pleasant kind, but also don't let anyone walk over you. Back to some pricing tips. You could also put in the description that it's an extra $10 a day for extra days of wear. So if your panties are priced at 20 bucks and you're putting that it's an extra $10 a day for more wear, you know, an extra five days, that's an extra $50. Make that clear. If you want to add bundling options in your description, make that clear. Say, hey, I'll do two for 50 or two for 100, whatever you're comfortable with. There are so many types of kinks. It's crazy. I mean, you could sell your panties from the time you were on your period. You could sell your panties after doing hot yoga in them. You could put in the description that you'll go on a five-mile hike, and you don't even really have to. It just, you know, make it exciting, and if you want to do it, by all means do it. There are just so many different ways you can get creative and expand your collection of underwear to attract the most potential clients that you can. So before we talk about how to mail these items, I want to note that there are quite a few other items that you can sell along with your panties. A lot of these websites allow it, or you can directly let your customers know once you have contact with them. Just make sure you read all the rules on the website because some might be more strict about how you sell things or what you sell. For example, used clothing, whether it's a tank top you always wore from high school or some leggings, most likely the more used they are, the better but you can list this stuff. I mean, think about it. All the clothes they don't take at Plato's Closet or all the clothes that you have to haul 10 miles to go to a donation center, you can sell this for money. Why trash your old clothes when you can turn a profit with them? Let's get into the juicy stuff. There is a huge kink for feet. So if you have really smelly feet, well, you're in luck. Sell your dirty fucking socks. Sell your old shoes. One of my best tricks up my sleeve would be going to Goodwill and finding the cutest, 
smallest pair of dirty fucking shoes, whether they were flip-flops with foot imprints in them or if they were boots with mud on them. It didn't much matter. The dirtier, the better, because y'all know my shoes are not dirty, and these clients and customers, they want dirty, nasty things. So go to Goodwill. If you find something that looks cute and sexy, but it's also old and gross, smellier the better, buy it. Let's go one step further, shall we? We're already here. Okay, Pussy Pops. Ever heard of it? Well, now you have. So a Pussy Pop is a lollipop or a sucker that you could sell on your website or however you're selling your items. And basically what you do is supposedly, theoretically, you're supposed to put this lollipop in your pussy, swirl it around, Ziploc bag it and send it to the customer. Now, we all know you're going to get a fucking yeast infection from this shit, so you're not going to put it in your pussy, but you're going to say you did. You're going to suck that lollipop until it's halfway gone, and then you're going to Ziploc bag it and ship it to your customer, okay? Pussy pops, $20 a pop, great deal. Find lollipops at your local gas station. Moving on, let's talk about bath water. Again, you can do this, you guys. (laughs) I mean, you're already taking baths, so go in there with a nice glass jar and just fill it on up because we're making money here. The last fun, exciting thing uh, that you could sell is your spit. (laughs) Yep, spit it out, bag it up, ship it off, and put that money in the bank girl. Now, you must be thinking, how much spit do I have to send to this customer? Well, I like to get those little Ziploc baggies and drink on something carbonated or something sweet that's going to make me salivate. That way, I'm not walking around with a bag all day (laughs) spitting in it. Uh, But just a little bit, I'd say if you get like the t- like not a regular Ziploc bag, but like half of one of those and fill it up like a third or a halfway. That should be good. You can even take an example photo. Again, along with these items, you could sell videos of yourself spitting in the bag. I mean, use yourself as a tool. You are a motherfucking money making machine and you are missing out on this plethora of cash. So there you have it. That was a preview from the Sletchapreneur podcast. And if you want to listen to the full episode, check out episode number 11, Weird Things I Sell on the Internet, Used Underwear. And there is like a whole nother seven minutes or whatever to that episode. So check out her feed for the Sletchapreneur podcast if you want to listen to that full episode. And I encourage you to check out other episodes as well. It's a great podcast if you are trying to sell your hodum on the internet, especially. So you know me, I am definitely in that camp. I am doing it myself. And I am actually going to use this opportunity to promote my own OnlyFans because I am now in the top 3.4% of all creators. I am on a mission to make it into the top 1% of OnlyFans creators before I retire. So if you are interested in a little peek behind the podcast, check out my OnlyFans page. Coco Peep Show is my handle on there. It's a lot of Playboy style pics. I'm very into that. I love doing the photo shoots. It makes me feel really hot. I'm kind of an exhibitionist or like I'm a full-fledged exhibitionist and I'm a sletchapreneur. So if you are interested in supporting the cause, check out Coco Peep Show on OnlyFans. And if you are in the mood for more selling sluttiness, sex work type episodes, there are a ton of those in the Private Parts Unknown back catalog as well. Uh, There's a whole series on comedians of OnlyFans and several episodes about unionizing strippers, and there's another one to come. So happy listening. Enjoy the Sletchapreneur podcast, Privates. It is another show on the Pleasure Podcast Network, and you can tune into that show every Thursday wherever you listen to podcasts. And the next episode of this podcast, Private Parts Unknown, will be out very, very soon, and it features an OnlyFans creator in the top 0.03%. 
So we are going to learn all of her secrets. And in the meantime, stay curious and keep exploring. Love you, privates.